Hello friends, I am so excited to go live. I am Surabi Veach, for those of you who don't know me. I am the passionate physio, and today I just am doing an impromptu live to talk about something that is so common, low libido, low desire. Hi, Sahista. Um, we're just talking about low, hey friends. We're talking about low desire, low libido, low energy for whether it's sex or any kind of sex, sexual play, um, this is super common in um, postpartum folks, but it's also common in folks who aren't, who've never even had a baby. And we need to talk about this. There's a stat that says, you know, more and more teen pregnancies are happening and more and more younger adolescents are having sex, but it's actually not true. Compared to 1991, this research I think was 2019, so pre pandemic. There's actually fewer adolescents having sex in 2019 than there were in 1991. There's actually fewer teenage pregnancies. So in our heads, we think everyone is doing it all the time and it's not always true. So I wanna talk about specifically postpartum and the multiple reasons. Hey friends, uh, we're talking about desire, libido, sex. So pop your questions in. This is just totally informal, um, casual conversation. So. We're talking about why so many people do not have the uh, desire or the energy to have sex. And let's talk about realistic things postpartum. You're exhausted, you are sleep deprived, you are touched out, you have a baby that's on you all the time. The crying, the, um, the, you know, the body changes, you might be insecure with your new postpartum body. And so there are many reasons why this can be happening, where you feel uh, more insecure about how you look, how you feel in your body. You might also be having pain in your pelvic floor. You might be having, um, you might be still recovering from a perineal tear or an episiotomy. If you had a cesarean birth, you're not immune to having pain in your pelvic floor. Many people, many of my clients with us who've had a C-section are shocked that they actually have pelvic pain when then it goes, when they're trying to have sex. And the reason is you carried a baby, you had a pregnancy, that actually has a greater impact on your pelvic floor for nine months than just the mode of delivery that you had. We often blame everything on the birthing method and we forget that pregnancy lasted nine months. Um, you know, longer for some. And not only that, there's many people who have pelvic floor dysfunction well before they even had a baby. Maybe they had too much tension in their pelvic floors, hey friends. Uh, pop in your questions in the chat. We're talking about libido, low energy, low desire, and many of the reasons why, especially for postpartum folks. Uh, we talked about all the fatigue, the exhaustion pieces, but I'm talking about pelvic floor issues now. Hey, Art from the Heart, I don't know what your name is, but Hey, Lalitha. Um, so yeah, when you have pelvic floor scar tissue, let's say, we want the muscles around the pelvic floor, the vagina. So what you see on the outside here is the vulva. You, the canal on the inside is the vagina. The vaginal opening, oftentimes you can have tearing here, here, here. And the degree of tearing often indicates how much scarring is there postpartum. There's also genetic uh, influences. Some people heal really well from scar tissue and some people don't. There's also, you know, nutrition, how well you're eating, how well you're sleeping, what kind of support system you have that also contributes to healing. So let's say you don't have any tearing. You may still have pelvic floor tension or trigger points, just like you can have knots up here or in your jaw, you can have knots down here that can contribute to pain. If you've got pain or discomfort, you're not going to want sex. You're gonna be like, ugh, that's unpleasant. That doesn't feel good. So you're naturally gonna want it less if it doesn't feel good. If your partner does not know how to, um, you know, or if your communication with your partner is off, or if your partner it doesn't know where to find the glitteris, and you're like, this just doesn't feel good, you're gonna want it less. So it's natural for low libido to occur when it doesn't feel good. If it feels painful, uncomfortable, if you if it's too uh, rushed. Um, that's another big contributor. I'm going to put my pelvis down. That's another big contributor of uh, low libido is actually not low libido itself. It's just that we're rushing foreplay. You know, let's look at pre-kids. We had time. Hey, we had time for, you know, date nights and we would get dressed and we would go out and we would make a night out of it. So you naturally feel more at ease. 
But now postpartum, we're expecting ourselves to just put the babies down and we're exhausted. There's a pile of dishes and laundry to be done. And we're expecting ourselves to be in the mood. We don't get that time. We don't get as much time with our partners. And yes, some people can make it happen, especially if they have family support and babysitters and whatnot, but it's really hard. So give yourself grace with that. It's not always possible to um, have the same sex life you know, immediately postpartum that you had pre-kids. It takes work and it takes communication on both parties. Many of the times partners will say they just, they just think everything's the same. And so now they're wondering why their partner does not want, um, is not as interested in sex or, you know, feels different down there. It is up to us to communicate with our partners if things don't feel good anymore. Maybe you liked a certain position before, but now that position doesn't feel good. Um, try something else. You know, people will, I, I work with clients and they're like, oh, you know, this hurts. And then I ask, have you tried a different position? And they're like, oh, uh, no. So try different positions because what might feel painful in one position may not feel painful in another position. And this might be different post skits because now you're, vulva, your vagina, everything may feel a bit different down there, especially in those first few weeks and months postpartum. Remember that estrogen is lower when you're breastfeeding. Your hormones are still, you know, in a different balance. So you're going to feel drier down there. So it's really, really important to use lubricant. And the, one thing to add to, with the lubricant conversation is many people forget it's not just lube, it's, you still need the foreplay. If you have adequate foreplay, and I'm talking like 30 minutes, aim for 30 minutes, hey friends, um, 30 minutes of foreplay. Ask for a full body massage, draw a bath, light the candles, make yourself feel like you're making a comfortable environment for yourself. Just like going back to the pre-kids dating uh, date night conversation where you you set the mood with the date night. You know, you're going out, you have dinner, you have dessert, you might have a glass of wine. You know, you, you get dressed up, you feel special. So when you come home, it is a natural progression to, you know, do something else or to, that that is foreplay, right? That whole evening is foreplay. Whereas now we're lacking foreplay and we're expecting ourselves to just be game on right away. And I will say there are a subset of people who have higher desire naturally, that's just their innate body, to, body. Um, and they, they have no issues. They're like, I don't know what you're talking about. I can, I'm just good to go whenever I have free time. And that's fantastic. I'm specifically talking to the folks right now who have the low libido, who have the low desire, who have no energy for sex. And I want to normalize it in one way. You're not weird or abnormal because you have less energy for this right now. You are postpartum. You are still recovering. You are exhausted. And I have, I work with moms who are like, I'm not really postpartum anymore. I have like a five-year-old. But if those same habits that you had postpartum are still there, if the same pelvic floor, if the painful pelvic floor is still there, if the lack of communication between your partner is still there, if you are still having trouble um, with your mental health, right? Mental health is a big part of uh, the conversation with uh, low energy or low libido, low desire, because oftentimes when people are depressed or they have anxiety or they have any type of mood disorders, it can suppress that desire. And you, you feel like it's you, you're the problem, but oftentimes just receiving that mental health support can go a long way. So anyone who has this low desire, I really encourage you to explore the idea of whether it's therapy or just talking to your doctor about it, talking to your, um, your mental health therapist if you have a counselor, and bringing it up. Don't be embarrassed. This is something that a lot of people have. And there are, it's not a quick pill that will solve your low libido. It is a lifestyle approach, right? We talked about mental health. We talked about communicating with your partner. Sex therapists are great for that. They will give you um, strategies for effective communication. Because especially as people who are women or identify as women, these aren't things that we grew up feeling comfortable talking about. In most of our families, like I don't remember my family ever uttering the word sex, ever, right? So I had learned that this was a taboo, that this was wrong, this wasn't something to talk about. So when then you grow up and you have pain, you just think, oh, is this normal? Is this how it's supposed to feel? And you know, luckily I, we live in a world where the internet exists, you can research, you can do your own research, you find out, no, it's not normal to have pain with sex oh no, it's not normal to have this feel like sandpaper or like glass. There are 
people who will help. Pelvic floor physical therapists, that's exactly why we're here, to help you have better sex lives, to have more pleasure, right? One of the biggest topics that is often missed in the whole conversation about sex and orgasms is pleasure. The goal of sex is not orgasming. Of course, orgasms are fantastic, but the goal of the sexual experience, whether it's with yourself, with a toy, with a partner or multiple partners, the point is pleasure. And if you don't feel pleasure in that experience, how will you orgasm? If you don't feel pleasure, how will you feel comfortable and safe in your body? And so cultivating pleasure is so, so important. And that's exactly why I'm having my workshop next month, um, just under a month, February 23rd. Friends, whoever's on here, whoever's watching the replay, come join my pleasure workshop next month. We are going to be practicing presence in our body. We're going to be doing a meditation and a mindfulness strategy that I use for the first little bit, breathing and getting into our body and getting into our mind. We don't want to separate mind and body. We want to embrace the fact that, oh, we are distracted. We are thinking about our to-do list. We are worrying about our child next door waking up because they hear us. Embrace that. Don't try to push that away. That is, you know, if that's the, the part of your life that you're in right now, that's the part of your life that you're in. I'm just looking to see who's here. Hey friends, pop your questions and if you, or if you have comments and if you're like, yep, that's me, I'm thinking about my to-do list, uh, let me know. You know, you're not, um, I just did a poll yesterday and I think it was 44% of my audience who voted um, said that they are distracted during sex thinking about something else. And then the other 44% is like, I don't have energy. No energy for, for it right now. Some of them are like recently postpartum. So you're like, that makes sense. Um, but some of them are older moms, right? Not like age older, but they have older kids and they're still experiencing that low libido, low desire. So we need to have this conversation. Pleasure is our birthright. Um, pleasure is important part of every single day. Whether And we're not, we're not talking about pleasure only with sex. We're talking about pleasure, period. The pleasure of the sun shining on your face. The pleasure of a warm bath. The pleasure of like good soul food. All of that is so, so important. And if you're not able to cultivate pleasure in the bedroom, or if you're having trouble cultivating pleasure in the bedroom, you need to cultivate it outside of the bedroom first. And we talk about foreplay before sex. Everything can be foreplay when you when you look at it at the lens of cultivating pleasure during your day-to-day -day activities. You know, I remember after my second child, you know, I was like, I have no energy for this, I have no time for this. And then I started to recognize that the impact of lack of pleasure is is not just on your relationship, it's on your relationship with yourself. We deserve to have good sex. We deserve to have good pleasure in our lives. And even if you're if you're like listening to this and you're like, oh, oops, um, you're, you know, if you're listening to this and you're like, I don't have any pain down there, but I still have trouble orgasming. You know, orgasms and pleasure go hand in hand and orgasms relate to your pelvic floor's strength, your mobility of your pelvic floor and the, and the endurance of your pelvic floor. So in my workshop next month, guess what we're doing? We're not just getting down and, you know, meditating, getting into our bodies. We're also working on releasing and unclenching that pelvic floor. I don't want you to hold all that tension in there because guess what? When you're holding tension in your pelvic floor, not only is pain with insert, not only are you going to have discomfort or pain with insertion, you're also not going to allow blood flow to come into the clitoris. The clitoris, my friends, for those of you who don't know, is our pleasure organ. For anyone who has a vulva or anyone who's listening who is with a partner who has a vulva, you need to know this. What we see on the outside, right, is this little tiny nub, right? That's called the glands. If you lift the hood of the clitoris, you, you will see that little dot. The clitoris is not a dot. It is actually this big. This is obviously a, a fun model of the clitoris. It's not, not actually purple, although that'd be pretty badass if it was. But you're going to see, you know, that little glands and you're going to see these bulbs and cura extend out. And the, this right here is erectile tissue, just like a penis is erectile. Fills in, when it engorges, fills with blood, it engorges, it gets erect. The clitoris also gets erect. This little nubbin, you know, gets erect when you are turned on, when you have adequate foreplay, when you have adequate lubrication, when you're in the right mood. There's a lot of things that have to go right in order for you to have good libido, good desire. And, you know, we haven't, we talked about it at the beginning. Hey friends, the impact of um, sleep deprivation, right? That 
seed preparation alone can kill your libido and also affect your mood. It, it can, um, it can affect every aspect of your life. So if you're in that like early postpartum sleep deprived phase, go easy on yourself, show yourself compassion. There's no rush to get back to normal. You will eventually, but there's no, oh my gosh, I'm six weeks. My doctor said I can have sex and, but I don't feel ready. If you don't feel ready, you don't feel ready. There's no reason to rush it. So let's talk, go back to talk about the clitoris. It is this big, right? So it hides, most of it is hidden. The only part that you actually see is the glands, right? If you lift the, if the, if you lift the hood of the clitoris, you'll see the glands, but it actually extends into here. And this part over here, the bulbs hug the inside of the vagina. So when we talk about any type of um, arousal and feeling turned on, if your partner or if you yourself are like only attacking here, you're missing a big part of the clitoris. And even before you go into your pelvic floor, foreplay needs to happen everywhere else. In your mind first, you need to feel connected to your partner. If you're feeling resentful, underappreciated as a new mom, you know that that's gonna directly impact your desire. You're not gonna feel, if you don't feel appreciated or valued, or if you're feeling burnt out, it's really hard to then feel turned on. Um, and I'm not saying it's impossible. For some people, it's like, I don't care how connected I am, I just, you know, I, I can turn it on like that. And those are people who we consider people with high, um, high desire, right? Just baseline, we are all different. Some people have low desire and they need a lot of, you know, gentle massaging, literally sometimes massaging to help them feel like, okay, I feel comfortable, I feel ready now. So, you know, a few key takeaways from this conversation. Hey friends, we're talking about low desire, low libido, low energy for sex, especially in that postpartum days. And what you need to know is that a, you're normal if you don't crave it right now. You're also normal if you do and you wish that it was better. Um, sex should always be pain-free. should never be painful. Even if it's your first time. We're led this myth that, oh, it's just going to hurt the first few times. It'll get better. It's not supposed to hurt, right? Does peeing hurt? Does pooping hurt? It's not supposed to hurt if everything's going right. Sex is a normal biological function. It is not supposed to hurt. And if it does hurt, there's a lot that we as pelvic health physical therapists can do to help you, especially around your pelvic floor muscles, your strength, your endurance, your mobility. In my workshop next month, we are gonna go over breathing, unclenching. So my bum workshop, breathe, unclench, move. We're gonna breathe, get into our bodies, unclench, release some of the tension in the pelvic floor. Uh, and in the hips, and in the butt, and in the back. Remember, the pelvic floor does not work in isolation. And then we're gonna move our bodies. We're gonna do some essential movements to kind of get your libido kick started, even if it is not necessarily like, oh, the goal is to go jump into bed with my partner. I want you to feel more pleasure in your body, period. I want you to feel more pleasure in your every single day. Because when you feel more pleasure, you want more pleasure, right? It's kind of like, when you feel happy, you seek out more happy things. You're not like, oh, I really am so happy. I'm going to seek out this sad movie. So when you feel happy and you feel joy and you feel pleasure, you'll seek out more pleasurable activities. We all know that sex can feel really good. Orgasms can feel really good. So why are so many of us not having sex, even though we know it feels good? Sometimes we're just, like I said, there's all sorts of other issues like sleep deprivation, feeling of touched out, you know, relationship issues with your partner. There can also be... Um, mental health issues, hormonal issues, so many other issues, but there's a lot that we still can control even with all that, even for people with mental health issues, even for people with um, sleep deprivation. You still deserve good pain-free sex, right? And I wanna actually um, add a comment that um, Katie, who's one of my um, online you know, IG friends here, I, I put a question box before we started this, asking if y'all have any questions about um, desire, orga or desire, libido, low energy, pop your questions in below, especially if you're new, new mom, new parent, and you're like, oh, I just feel so different in my body, feel so disconnected to my pelvic floor. Y'all, we can help you with that. You don't have to live with that. But anyways, this comment was from Katie and she said, everyone likes a little bit of kink, but they don't like to talk about it. This is the other part of the conversation, especially for women. You know, I'm gonna ask you all here who are here, how many of you can talk to your friends openly about sex? Just drop a yes, no in the comments if you're here. Don't 
Don't be shy, folks. I, I, for one, for example, I have like one friend maybe I can talk to openly, but most of them not really. Yeah, it's too painful for you. There you go, right? And like pain with sex is so common, but it's not normal. Just like pain with peeing, there's some people who have pain with pooping and peeing. It's not normal though. We shouldn't have that. And there's stuff that we can do to help you with that. Join my workshop next month as a start, right? It's, I have early bird registration on right now. You are gonna get a replay of it. So you're gonna learn techniques to release. Um, you're gonna learn stretches. You're gonna learn movements to just help you feel more connected to your pelvic floor. Um, these issues are not like a, even if you've had pain with sex for like 10 years, this is still something that can improve and resolve, right? I don't want you to feel like just because you've had it for a long time or it's never worked for you, that it will never work for you. It can still improve, right? Um, and I thank you for sharing that because I know it's not always easy to talk about. You know, everyone, it's already a taboo conversation in many of our households. Like I'm Indian, like, you know, in many brown households, we, don't, we just don't talk about it. But so many people are having these issues and across cultures, People don't talk about it in their homes. Very few people, I should say. And so then they grew up to have all of these beliefs that they learn from the external environment, from TV, from media, about what sex is supposed to look like, from pornography, about what sex is supposed to look like. And it's not a performance. Sex is not a performance. Just like pooping is not a performance. It's a feeling in your body. Sex is a feeling in your body, right? We're talking about normal biological functions here. It's not a performance. It's not meant to look any certain way. It's not, it's meant to be individual to you, what, what helps you feel good. So I want you to just remember that whatever you're going through right now, if, you, if it's pain, it's low desire, low libido, that there's help. There might be a mental health, you know, sex therapist component of it, especially if you're a partner or even if you're, uh, you know, single and you're like exploring this. But there's also pelvic health physiotherapy. And yes, I work virtually. I help people from all over the world with these issues. And there's also local pelvic PTs everywhere. I have a directory through the link in my bio for melanated pelvic physical therapy, therapists across Canada, US, Jamaica. So go check that list out if you wanna find someone in person. If you wanna support virtually, you know where to find me. Just send me a DM and say, hey, I was on your live and I really enjoyed this, I need support. Um, and then as you know, bare minimum, Join my BUM for Pleasure workshop. BUM stands for Breathe, Unclench, Move. We're going to spend 60 minutes breathing, unclenching, releasing, and moving our bodies. I'm going to show you stretches and exercises that are going to work for you to unlock, unleash that pleasure so that you can start to feel more connected and present in your body, even if you're sleep deprived, even if you are a new mother, even if you're like, I'm so burnt out, let's channel a little bit of attention and time into ourselves. Let's pour into ourselves. Hey, Shanique so that we can actually have better, and I'm, I'm not saying better sex lives, I'm talking about better pleasure. Sex is like up here, if you don't even feel pleasure first, that's the first thing we need to address. And in order to feel pleasure, we need presence in our bodies. You cannot feel pleasure if you don't feel presence. I'm gonna end soon, but I'm gonna give you one example that I love, that people, you know, they absolutely get. You know when you're having a delicious piece of cake, or samosa, or you know, think about chat or whatever food you're like, I love this food. But let's say you're eating it and you're on your phone, you're scrolling. Or let's say you're eating it and you're watching a movie. Ever eat a whole tub of popcorn while watching a movie and be like, I feel like I didn't even eat anything. That's exactly the point. When you are distracted, you don't even notice the delicious flavors in that whatever you're eating, whether it's the samosa or that hot cup of chai or that cake or, you know, the hot wings or whatever it is that you're eating, when you are so mentally distracted, that pleasure is actually minimized. So what do you think is gonna happen during sex when you are so distracted? Not your fault either, <laughs> just because life is busy and life is overwhelming, especially for a new parent. What do you think is gonna happen when your brain is like, oh, to-do list, oh, I forgot to take the laundry out of the wash, oh, I gotta hang this up, oh no, I, I didn't sign that form for my kid's school. Like when you're thinking about that, what do you think is gonna happen when your partner is going to town and you're, you know, you're like, I wanna be in here, I wanna feel good, but I just don't. So a big part of our goal in that workshop next month is to practice presence and cultivate that as a, as a skill. You might suck at it right now. You might be like, I'm already 
I'm always distracted. I'm always here and there. You know, I have clients with ADHD and they're like bouncing from one topic to the other. But even if you have a, even if you're neuro, neurodivergent, you can still cultivate the practice of presence so that you can cultivate more pleasure in your lives. Drop a message, drop a emoji down a heart if you're if you're here and if you feel me. Shakti, send me a DM. We don't want we don't want painful sex. We we do we do not want painful sex. And um, you know, a lot of medical profession professionals too. You know, this is a hard topic for anyone. <laughs> like it's it's awkward for me too to talk about it openly when I have grown up for I'm in my mid thirties. We have never in my culture had these open conversations. I don't see a lot of people who look like me have these open conversations. So don't feel like you're alone if you're like, ah, this is an awkward topic to talk about with my partner or with my doctor or with my physical therapist. You're just another human with another issue, right? So it's not, it's not taboo. It's taboo if we don't talk about it, if we just minimize it. And that's why I laughed when I saw Katie's comment about, we all like a little bit of kink, but nobody wants to talk about it, right? If you're like, I want to have a wild sex life, or I already have a wild sex life, and we we do the we do it all, fantastic, right? Enjoy that, enjoy that experience. Don't feel like um, that's taboo, especially if you're a woman, right? Like if you identify as a woman, don't feel like you can't enjoy the experience. You're actually supposed to. We have an entire organ, the clitoris, that is strictly designed for pleasure. So don't feel like, you know, this isn't uh, an appropriate thing for you, even though maybe in the, the way you were raised or the household that you were raised, um, it was. All right, y'all, I'm gonna sign off in just a minute. Um, any last questions, pop them below. I'll save this live to my page. I know it's it was about a half hour or so for anyone who like came in late or missed it and who just wants to feel seen and heard. I'm gonna save this for you and just recognize that no matter what you're going through, there is help for you. No matter how long you've had pain with sex, vaginismus, vulvodynia, whatever vulvar, vaginal painful issues that you have, scar tissue from episiotomy or um, tearing from delivery, having child, no matter what you've got down there, things can improve and get better. One component is to allow yourself time. We sometimes expect like overnight, we've had this issue for 20 years and now overnight it's gonna be solved. Not necessarily, but each step forward is still a step forward. So take those steps forward, reach out for support, send me a DM if you need support from me. Um, I do offer one-on-one -on -one virtual sessions worldwide. I will post it, Chuck the, I will. Um, and I, like I said, I want y'all to join my workshop next month. It's $29. I'll post this live as long as, as, long as it saves properly, right? Uh, I share this live with your friends because I know this is not always a topic that is easy to have with your friends, um, but it might open up some conversations, right? And this is what it's all about. This is how progress is made little by little by little through small bits of conversations and um, allowing these conversations to feel less stigmatized. If you had pain in your shoulder, would you hide it from your friend, right? So why do we hide it and not talk about it when we have pain that's limiting a very big area of our lives? Um, you know, it's, it doesn't make sense. And just because it's been that way for a long time doesn't mean it can't change. So thank you so much for all of you who popped in today live. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate your comments and your questions um, because it does take courage to ask and it does take courage to share these things openly and um, give yourself an applause, a round of applause, and see you at my workshop. My workshop, by the way, is Thursday, February 23rd at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm in Toronto, Canada. However, there's gonna be a replay, so if you're like in a different time zone, if you're like, ah, that's dinner time with my kids, I can't make that, no worries. You're gonna get the replay, um, and it's gonna be an amazing 60 minutes, and it's gonna be just like this, us hanging out, but I'm gonna be showing you. We're gonna be actually moving and experiencing in our bodies. So you're going to feel, after that 60 minutes, you're going to feel so attuned to yourself. You're going to feel yourself feel less inhibited. Anything that's negative in your life, stress, burnout, trauma, we actually hold in our pelvic floors, right? So when we're talking about pelvic floor pain, it's not just the muscles. It's sometimes talking about things that, you know, that are here, mind-body connection as well. So we're going to do a nice meditation and walk you through a visualization that's going to be 
Um, that's really, really powerful. That works really well with my clients and even with myself for issues that I've had. So lots of love to you, LU. Thank you so much. And you can enroll in that. Can we enroll for that in February? Yeah, it's the enrollment is open right now and early bird prices are on. Um, so it's on sale right now. So you can enroll in that today. You can enroll in that in February as well. Um, the prices will go up in Hey, Takesha, now I have to say, my friend, my friend Takesha is here. Um, but yeah, you can sign up for that in February as well. I'm going to be talking about that every freaking day for the next month. You know that? Because people, hey, Megan, are y'all on lunch break right now? But yeah, I'm going to be talking about pleasure and <laughs> for the next month. Because listen, this is a conversation that I haven't talked about a lot on my page and the more I was thinking about it, I'm like, oh my gosh, so many of my clients have these issues and if I'm not talking about it, I'm making it taboo too, right? So we need to actually have these conversations openly because trust me, I, I don't wanna say like most of my clients have pain with sex or uncomfortable sex or weaker orgasms postpartum, but I, I, I actually do think that. I think most people have some kind of dysfunction down there um, that's not directly caused by childbirth, Sometimes it's all the psychosocial stuff, the changed relationship with your partner, the stress, the, um, and anyone who's a NICU parent, NICU mom, like, you know, y'all are next level, right? Heroes, like you have even more stress in your lives in that early postpartum phase. So that's going to affect your, um, desire as well. And sometimes I have a few questions we'd like to talk to you about in detail. Fatima, you can send me a DM, but I don't necessarily respond to detailed questions via DM. I'm going to guide you to book a, a consult with me. So I have an hour uh, virtual call and we can answer all your questions. But if you have questions, just send me a DM and I'll, I'll let you know if that's something that I already have posts about or something, or if you can just um, sign up for my workshop or work with me one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Um, just out of respect to my paying clients, I don't I don't uh, respond to detailed, you know, personal issues via DM. And it's not fair to you either if I'm just giving you advice that I don't know the full story about. But yeah, the people who are here now, I'll hang out for a couple more minutes. Um, tell me, any has anyone here had pain with sex or weaker orgasms after having a baby or any kind of pelvic health, you know, low libido, low desire? Um, listen, after my first child had prolapse and so I was so self-conscious about what I looked like down there how I felt like my partner didn't feel anything different oh your physio nice I do offer mentorship as well amazing yeah let's chat um but yeah I do what was I gonna say yeah I just felt so insecure right and so when things when you're insecure about your body like that's directly gonna impact how your pelvic floor yeah, low desire for so long. And for me, looking back, I was depressed too, right? And I didn't recognize that till later. And so understanding that our mental health, and like this is also why it's important to have a holistic approach, nutrition, so low um, fats in your diet, people who are trying to lose weight and they're dieting, like you need food for good vaginal health. Your vagina, your pelvic floor muscles are like 79% water. So if you're dehydrated and your poops are like pellets, no wonder sex doesn't feel good right? So everything is interrelated. And this is what I talk to with my one-on-one -on -one clients this is what I talk about on my page too. It's not just here's this pelvic floor exercise that will fix everything because it's not true. It's not one thing that's going to fix it all. Low desire has so much to do with, um, you know, everything, your relationship with yourself, your relationship with your partner, uh, your relationship with sex period, like what you think, what values you have about it. You know, one of my values that I, or values that I didn't realize that I had was I thought sex was for people who didn't have kids, right? I thought everything you see on TV is like single people, you know, going out and having sex. And then do you see moms talking about it? No. So you almost start seeing, I started seeing myself as like not sexual, not a sexual being. And it, it was weird. It was a weird, um, it was something I had to really work on because it was not something that I was anticipating feeling, first of all. But with my body changes and with the fatigue and the mental health component, like, listen, when you're sleep deprived, your brain will convince you of the worst things, right? That you're not worthy of pleasure. You're not worthy of this and you're not good enough or that you no longer are good if you desire this, right? So just even challenging those thoughts that we have is so, so important because it's not true. These are all cultural messages that we've got, whether it's from our like actual cultural backgrounds or the society at large. 
who do we see on TV when we're seeing ads that are, you know, sexual? It's not, <laughs> it's not usually moms. And if they are moms, they're usually thin or white or, you know, a certain figure. So it's very easy if you don't fit in with that very narrow um, Eurocentric standards that are based on white supremacy. If you don't fit in that, you basically feel like, okay, what's left for me, right? And so for people who are black, brown, you know, indigenous who or who are marginalized, if you are fat or if you are disabled or you don't fit in that, that quote unquote ideal, which is not actually ideal, but that category, then you start to feel, oh, am I broken? Oh, is my scar tissue mean I'm broken? You know, do I have... Is my vulva now ugly because I have a scar? Because I have a prolapse? Because I have a C-section, right? You start to have these challenging, um, not challenging, but negative self-beliefs. And that's stuff that we need to work on through therapy, through mindset, through healing work, and through pelvic health physical therapy too. And in my workshop, I'm gonna guide you through a very powerful meditation and visualization that I find to be really helpful. Um, not just for like desire and sex, but in many aspects of my life. And hey, friends, I'm just about to wrap up, but we're just, we're just we had a great conversation actually for like the past 45 minutes about low desire, you know, low libido, um, and why that might be right. And so I'm really excited to be talking more about this over the next month running a workshop on February 23rd. I hope y'all will join. If it's bedtime for you and your kids, it's okay. You're gonna get the replay. You can do it on your own time. You can watch it every week to help you channel with channel within yourself more pleasure, more joy, um, more presence, right? We talked about presence a lot because without presence, you can't feel pleasure. And that is sometimes so many of us are lacking presence. We're just in that brain fog thinking about this next thing and that next thing and that next thing. And for those of you, I know one of my clients is your who's pregnant. February 23rd workshop, link in bio. Yep, that's right. Early bird registration is on right now too. So hit that link, grab your spot. I would love to have you all there. Um, if, you, if you need help, just send me a DM and I will um, help you out. I know one of you said you're a physio and you have questions about your clients, just send me a DM. And um, I do offer mentorship as well for pelvic health physiotherapists or fitness pros or anyone in this field who wants to dive in a little bit more and have these conversations about how we can just do better for our clients. Um, because let me tell y'all who are listening, who aren't in the health, in the health world, we didn't learn this in school. <laughs> we all graduated from physio school, never having talked about sex. And I remember this, I remember this to this day. I had this patient of mine. He was, I was like 25, right? And um, he was like in his early forties. He'd thrown, thrown out his back, which you can't actually do, but you know, that's a term that we all use. This guy couldn't move. He had like a disc herniation or something. Hey, Jennifer. And so this guy had hurt his back and he was so embarrassed. And like on our third session, he was doing better. He was like, you know, sort of be, I just uh, have a question for you. And I was like, this is getting awkward. And then he's like, um, you know, sex is really important to me and my wife and you know, not able to like deliver for her and you know my back really hurts do you have any advice and so legit this is how uncomfortable i was talking about it back then i went to the back and there was a book and i photocopied pages for him and i wish i still had this book but it was at the the clinic that i worked at and like the pictures were just like from the 60s or something like the guy had a big mustache but anyways i photocopied it for him put it in an envelope did not talk about it gave it to him and he came back the next, he's like, thank you so much. This was so helpful. So even just the bare minimum of like acknowledging that that is an issue was hard for me because as a physiotherapist, we graduated never having talked about it. So if you haven't taken specialized courses in pelvic health or done your own work in the women's health field or, or just sexual health field, you may not know. So if you're like, I've talked to a professional and we've never talked about this, this may be why. It's just not... Pelvic health physiotherapists are especially trained to talk about this more openly, but not all physios are. Um, but you might be seeing somebody for your knee and have a question about how am I gonna have sex if I can't kneel, right? So these, the topic of sex and pleasure enters all realms. It's not just people who have pelvic floor dysfunction. It's people in general, people with pelvises, people with a heartbeat. So don't feel like your issues don't matter. I had a mess, I got a DM from somebody today and she was like, you know, I feel so dismissed and unseen by, by professionals. She, she has pain with insertion of a tampon. She's got prolapse. And I'm like, that's common. 
but like everybody she's seen, the pelvic PT that she's seen, the doctor that she's seen, hey, um, ha has basically said like, we can't help you. So even just understanding that whatever you're going through is common is like a bit of a relief. But remember that you don't have to accept it as a normal finding. You can still get help. You can still, just because it's common, just peeing yourself is common, y'all. But I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to normalize that as something that we all do um, just because it's common. The, the reason it's helpful to hear that it's common because it takes the pressure off you being the only weird one or abnormal one. You're normal, okay? Just because you have a dysfunction, hey, Prithvi, just because you have dysfunction, just because you have pain does not mean you're broken. It still means you're normal, still means you're whole, still means you are deserving of pleasure and joy and sex. Um, just because you have low libido and desire right now does not mean that's how it's always going to be. I know people who are like, the best years of my, se uh, or the best sex life I had was in my 50s, right? Like, if you're like, oh, I'm in my 20s and it already hurts, like what's gonna happen in my 30s? Don't worry about it. Right? Focus on right now what you can do right now to help yourself to not just sit with sit with pain because you have pain, right? And um <laughs> and you know, thanks to Keish, but like it's it's true, right? It's um I've really learned this for the past few years because I've been going to therapy. And you you go to therapy and you're like, oh perfect, two, three months and I'll be I'll be better, right? And then you, like a year goes by and you're like, oh, I, I'm actually a lot better, but I still have so much more to unpack. Because once you start unpacking like one thing, you might discover other things underlying, right? So taking the pressure off it having to be like a quick fix, an, an emergency, like this needs to be dealt with this second and giving yourself permission to deal with it over time because you're a human that deserves time to deal with these issues. Um, and then having a conversation, if you are partnered, have partners, having this, this conversation can be really hard. So that's where seeing a therapist or a sex therapist or a counselor can help with giving you dialogue and conversation starters and how to actually go about having these conversations that are can be really awkward at first. And even just acknowledging that you're uncomfortable can be big, right? Like we didn't learn any of this in school. We didn't learn how to talk to our partners about sex in school. We didn't learn it anywhere. Hey, so, you know, don't feel like you have to have it all figured out by yourself. This is why humans are the way we are. We depend, rely on each other. We work together. We, nobody can be a loner and be fully happy, to be honest, you, you know, and um, nobody is in the, with, with the pandemic, we saw this even more, right? Where people were isolated and increased rates of depression, increased rates of mental health disorders. And I'm seeing more cases of pain because people aren't moving as much, their activities have changed, slowly things are getting back to a more normal state, but still, that is still, we're still lagging behind, right? So, all right, friends, I'm gonna head off. This was longer than I anticipated, but y'all know I love to talk and talk about these issues and have so much passion about it. Um, send me your DM with any questions. Go sign up for my workshop right now. Link is in my bio. Um, and I wish you all the pleasure for the rest of your day and the rest of the week. Thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer's actually one of my mentoring clients. Somebody else, Jennifer, had asked about, um, you know, sending me some questions about physio patients. So, you know, this is why I love this space, right? We connect with amazing other practitioners like Jennifer. Go check her out. She's in BC, Vancouver. Vancouver, yeah. Um, and we connect with people of different cultures and locations and we talk about these things and we destigmatize them so all right friends have a wonderful day lots of love to you and i'll post this to my page as long as it saves <laughs> all right see you